put in the application and to my surprise when I went to go hand the lady my application in the window she said well have a seat young lady I'm looking around like uh, who would you me have a seat have a seat for what she said well um, after putting in the application you're going to go through your first interview I was thinking what oh my god my first interview and this is going to be story time. I remember that I got a request to do the story from what that I was talking about when I was uh, 16, going to 17 years old, and I had got a job, and I was so excited about it, and it was at the nurse's home as a nurse's aide, and back then you didn't need a certificate. <laughs> One particular day, I had been in the shelter like for three days, and the women were telling me that it's so hard to find a job because the jobs were so far away, you know. And I said, well, what are the better chances to find a job? They said, well, you're going to have to go outside of the north, and you probably get hired like in Bloomfield, Woodbridge, Montclair, Somerset, all those things. They were just saying, you're just going to have to look outside of north to find yourself a job. Well, I was able to, because I stayed in the shelter, they provided bus passes for everybody. I was thinking to myself, like, wow, oh my God, I'm going to go everywhere to try to find myself a job. I got a free bus pass. <laughs> I went and did a search uh, to find out where they were hiring. And the shelter said, told the women that this place were hiring nurses aides, and you didn't have to be certified to get hired. Now, they told me they didn't think that I would get the job because I was young. But when I called them, they said, actually, um, they start to hire for the summer. If you were 16 years old, you can work for the summer. And I said, oh my God, wow, okay. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna apply for a job. I caught a bus. No, first, I, yeah, I caught a bus uh, to get to the train station. I caught a train to get to Somerset. And from Somerset, the nursing home has a van that picks you up to take you to the nursing home. Because that's how far away it was. Literally, it took me four hours to basically get there. Because it was my first time. And, it, you know, it, it took me a long time to get there. Uh, just in case you don't know... 46, so it was like almost like a century ago, okay, <laughs> that you didn't need a certificate. So, yeah, so anyway, I'm going to be eating some hard candy. And this candy is raspberry candy by Roman the German. lucky I found myself a job and it was at a nursing home I had to get a bus downtown Newark then I had to catch a train to Somerset and then I had to wait for a van that picks you up and take you close to the nursing home nursing yeah nursing home I think it was called Kingston I'm not I can't remember but I had to go back and look at my diary. But the nursing home was way up like a hill. Way up. After I get off the van, I had to walk way up this hill. By the time I got up there, I was exhausted. 
I had a crying baby all night. Like my daughter cried all night. I used to cry her, cry with her. I used to be like, <laughs> please stop crying. Please stop crying. I used to be just like that. Okay. This this candy gum. Mm. Very good. She got to sleep. I had bags under my eyes. And I still was in school. So, by the time I made it to work, I was half dead. So, a couple of times, I got in trouble. And, oh, and just in case I didn't say what the story is about, I got fired. First job that I got fired on, and after that, I have never ever got fired again. Never got fired from another job after this job. I learned my lesson. Now, I was a nursing home was filled with like um, older disabled people or just older people, both as and. I would do my round. I'm time to finish early. When you finish early, you're supposed to go do extra stuff. No, but no, not me. I went to one of the rooms. And I was only going to catch like a quick nap. The bed looked so cozy. I climbed in the bed. And then it felt good, but then it was kind of cold. So then I put the blanket over me, the, the, the blanket and sheet that they had on the bed. I just put the blanket part over me. And I laid my head on the pillow. I never woke up. When I woke up, it was like the end of the day. And one of the supervisors found me. They lectured me, they got on me, they told me that they understood that I was a young mom, a teenage mom, but I got to take my job seriously. For some reason, when I got to the nursing home, being around those people made me feel sleepy. So, I tried to... Like shake and do exercise while I was at work so I wouldn't get so sleepy. Now, the second incident, I was told, I was in training now. Even though I still was getting paid, I was in training. I was told that I had an older man that I was going to be responsible for, for making sure that he eats. And me being a young girl, I date when I first started out, I only had to fix the beds, clean up the room, flush the toilet, make sure they had all the little necessities like soup and stuff like that, and bringing them towels. I was happy with that part. I had no complaints whatsoever. Now they told me I'm going to be feeding somebody. I was thinking, okay, I'll make sure I cut up the chicken and steak, whatever they get, real small. I'll make sure everything is okay. And I was not excited. I was kind of nervous because, and then I said, oh, I'll be fine because I got a baby. I can do this. When they brought the man in, he looked like he was skinny, he was bald, losing most of his hair, and he looked kind of sad. And, you know, I said, okay. So I said hello to him. He didn't say hi back. I said, well, let me go get your food. I went to go get his food, and they gave me some mashed potatoes and some freaking applesauce. To feed this person. I was 
was like, um, where's the, where's the rest of the food? They said they can't eat anything else, but they're going to eat. So I went over there, and I started talking nice and said, you know, this is what they gave me for you to eat today. I'm sure it tastes pretty good, you know. And I said, you must be hungry. And he said, I don't want that FS. <laughs> what? He said, I don't want that FS. I was like, wow, this is what they gave me to feed you, and you gotta eat them. He said, I'm not eating it. I said, you're eating it because we can't allow you to get sick. I went to go put the spoon in the mashed potato and I put it up to his mouth and he took it in. And he still looked real nice. He's, he's eating it. He was like, and I'm looking at him. He swallowed it. I was like, okay. Yeah. So I went to go give him some applesauce in his mouth. He smiled. I um, what the freak? And then he looked at me like this. After I got the applesauce off my eyes and my face, like, I forgot that I was supposed to be a nurse to eat. We was about to fight. And next thing you know, another nurse came over there. She stopped us from arguing because I was arguing with him. I was going off. And she said, he does that all the time. You have to prepare yourself. I said, well, if he does this all the time, why would they give him to me? You know, why, why would they give him to me? And she said, well... You got to learn to deal with different people. And then I told her, I ain't want to deal with him no more. Like, I literally was down with him. Like, I was just so freaking, <laughs> I was so mad. Oh, my God. And then they sent me to this old lady's room. And he told me that she was basically bedridden. And that the only thing they wanted me to do was go sit with her. And if she needed anything, help her. That was it. I was so happy I didn't have to deal with him. And then when I got to this room, this lady a white woman. She was really, really, really old. And she said to me, she said, do you like to read? And I said, yeah, I like to read. She says, would you read me this book? So I read her a book. And she told me that she liked it, my voice. And she started telling me about things, telling me, uh, you know, like little things in life. And she was telling me how some people, like herself, was in a nursing home with no family and no friends. She had nobody. And she was bedridden. But just the fact that I could come in there and we to her meant a lot. And we started becoming friends. So every day I got to work, I would run to her room. I would change her water for her flowers. I would pull the sheets up to make sure she was warm. I would check the temperature. I would rub her feet. I would rub her hands. And sometimes I would brush her hair. And she always looked forward to seeing me. And every time I came, she had like this new message for me. And just seemed like 
everything in life just just looked different to me, looked better to me because of her. And then I would talk to her about my daughter, and she would give me motherly advice. She was like the sweetest old lady, you know? So one day I was in the phone, and they called me, and they told me that I had somebody to tend to. And basically I had to give another older person a bath. Well, I thought this was going to be easy. I, I got this. I went to go do that, to get a person one of them showers. They sit inside like a tub, and then you have like a, a hose with soft water, and you basically bathe them. Well, when I got in there, Unfortunately, it was the man. The old freaking man who spit freaking applesauce on me, okay? I was like, oh my God, I'm not dealing with him. I'm not dealing with him. And she said, well, everybody else is busy. You're going to have to deal with him. Oh. I start bathing his back. Bathing his shoulder, bathing his arm, I bathed his body. So I gave him, you know, the little hose and told him to clean his bottom. He told me something, no, you supposed to do that. I said, no, you take it and you do like this and you clean. He's like, no, you supposed to do that. So I take some wash rag and I go to the bottom. I clean his parts, and then he's sitting up there just laid back, smiling. And he said, could you do it some more? I was like, no. I cleaned you good enough. I'm not cleaning you no more. It got to the point where he was demanding me to clean him, okay? He just wanted somebody to touch him. So... Basically, me and him got into an argument, and a supervisor came, and he was upset telling her that I didn't want to clean him, and I told her that he was super clean, he was being fresh, he just wanted me to touch him. So then, a supervisor told me that we need to have a meeting, and she told me that I have to find a way to learn how to attend to people because I'm getting paid to do a job and that I can't take things personal. But at the time, I was so young. It was just like everything was to me was like, ew, ew, ew. And it got to the point where I just felt like if I didn't know how to do this job, I'm going to end up losing it. So I decided one day that I was going to come to work. I was going to do everything they told me to do. And I was going to do the job. Well, one day I had to come to work. And uh, one of the older people had, um, I don't know how to say a bowel moment. Anyway, I had to clean them up. So I did it. And I thought that I would never be able to do it, but it didn't bother me because they were helpless. And I started to really, really like my job. And then every day, I would go see the old lady and she would give me more, she would talk to me in metaphor. And that's where I get my metaphor language from. <laughs> I noticed that I talk a lot in metaphors. I say things and you have to be quick to catch it to see, what, you know, to understand what I'm talking about. And she gave me like a better understanding when it came to dealing with people other than myself or different from myself, you know? And she made me, she helped me learn to deal with older, angry, sad, this 
unsafe people. On one particular day, I came to work. I came to work fresh. I wasn't sleeping. I was just sneaking in one of the rooms trying to go to sleep. I was excited about my job. And I went to the room to read to the old lady before I start doing everything else. When I got there, the, her room was empty. The bed was clean and brand new, like the sheets and everything. So I figured, oh, they must have moved her to another room. So I went ahead and started doing all the things that I need to do. And then on my lunch break, I decided that I would take my lunch to wherever she was and I would go eat lunch with her. I went to the nurse's station to find out where she'd been moved. I never really talked about this story or told anyone about this story. It's just something I kept in my heart. I just figured it'd just be one of my life memories. But yeah, they told me that she, she wasn't moved. She died. And it was one I think I was just so shocked that she was gone. I fell to the floor. And I just laid in a ball in a fetus and I lost it at work. I lost it. I cried. I cried. I cried. I hollered. I think so much hurt and so much pain was inside of me for so long that when that happened I mentally did not know how to deal with it and I ended up in the hospital not to stay but I think because they thought that I was having a type of breakdown. But I think I was just so exhausted from, you know, just like, like now, like my throat was just so tightened. Because I think about how I lost my grandmother and how she meant a lot to me. And then this old lady at work, she just became my friend. And I'm always looking forward to seeing her. And I was so young. I couldn't deal with it. And they told me to take a few days off from work. And I did. And when I came back to work, I made up my mind that I'm working in a nurse's home, that people are going to die. And this is something I need to get used to. I had made up my mind that I would get used to this. This, this I would never, ever get close to another person at the nurse's home. 
because they're going to die. This is what I made up my mind to say. They old. A lot of them are sick and lonely. And they're in the home health care for a reason. But my supervisor called me to the office. She gave me a hug. And she told me that they couldn't use me anymore because... They didn't feel like I could handle that type of job. Dealing with people and their and people and them losing people. They told me that they lose people all the time and and you have to be one of those people who can watch someone pass or see someone die and not be emotionally affected. And you can see I'm still affected. Like just, I don't even know how to explain why I let stuff like that affect me. I just don't, I just do, I think it all leads to me losing the, the one person that loved me back. And then I finally meet someone that was kind, sweet. Wise, intelligent, loving, caring, and gentle. I was devastated. But yeah, that's my story time. I was fired. <laughs> they gave me the boot. <laughs> <laughs> when I look back on it, I don't. I think I faded to the floor. I don't even think I fell. I think I faded. I was just so shocked <laughs> that she was gone. But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you again in my next story time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.